Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Patricia Barnowski Schneider. Hello and welcome back to Successful Minds. I'm your host, Patty Baranowski Schneider, CEO of Pristine Advisors. Today I'm joined by Pat Mayan, the COO of the Tech Resource Centers. Our topic today focuses on what you can do to better connect your marketing message with your ideal customer. But before we jump in, a little bit about Pat. Pat spent most of his career as the owner of a clinical engineering company based here on Long Island. As an engineer, Pat had to learn the business part of ownership from the ground up. Thankfully, he had a great mentor to help him along the way. After selling the company, he created the TEC Resource Center with his wife to provide entrepreneurs with the resources they need to grow faster and live a better balanced life as a business owner. So thanks for joining us today, Pat. Thanks, Patty. Happy to be here. Great. Now, why don't you give us a little quick rundown of what people can learn from the tech and the resources you have available? Sure, yeah. So the Tech Resource Center, as you said, was created after sort of a long journey of my own in a clinical engineering company where my wife was my HR director. Um, and we sort of learned a lot along the way. And we we sort of said to ourselves when we, we sold the company, you know, what can we do to sort of pay some of our good fortune back and still stay involved in the in the business world? helping young entrepreneurs sort of figure their way out through that jungle of business, right? So what we do is we connect them with the tool sets they need to sort of get get things moving in the right direction with the right tempo and some accountability along the way if, if we do some coaching and some advising with them. So we have a sort of host of um, vendors that we associate with where we can help them manage projects from the ground up. So, you know, our goal really is to help um, – Help that entrepreneur be more successful. Nice. That's very nice. Too. Not enough of you around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So seeing how you're involved with the business community, can you tell us a bit about what your process is like? Like what intrigues you, what you look for, and how you navigate the, pro the process? And if you have any success stories you can share. Sure. So most of our customers come to us with a need. There's something that's just not functioning correctly, either in their business life, or sometimes it's actually in the work life part of the of the business balance, right? And so we, we start with as an assessment of a company, um, looking at the various components of an organization to see how they're functioning, sort of like if you went to a doctor, he'd take a basic physical to see what the what the parameters of the company look like, mm -hmm. and you know, what how, how they're functioning. From, from there, we sort of try and match up a, a really a corrective action plan, if you will, where we take those pieces that need a little effort or a little more focus mm -hmm. and we put the right toolkit and the tool sets to them to help uh, help get them corrected. And not only that, help the, help the business owner sort of monitor how that works on a go-forward basis. I'm, I'm a huge believer in KPIs or key performance indicators. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so many business owners just don't take the time to measure the results of, of the hard work that they're putting in. So, um, you know, our process is pretty painless. Mm -hmm. It's really a lot of conversation uh, and a lot of uh, discussion around where we want to go and what what people want to do. We work with all sorts of different companies. Like I have a bakery I'm working with right now, which is a, a mother, uh, two nieces and a, and a daughter that are running a bakery in Valley Stream. Mm -hmm. uh, and their problem really was, hey, we're growing very quickly, but uh, profitability wise, we're struggling. We're not able to pay ourselves a decent wage. Right. So, you know, we dug in and we sort of figured out that, hey, you know, a lot of it had to do with the economy today where the cost of goods have gone up so significantly and they had not raised their prices. And all too often, business owners are reluctant to raise pricing. Right. And it, it uh, you know, we got some of that turned around, but we, we work with a lot of different people on a lot of different levels, everything from marketing and getting your message correct and to the customer. Right. Um, to, you know, getting profit on the bottom line and that they can, uh, you know, sort of feel good about. 
Right. I mean, that's important because you sometimes need that outsider to come in and, and, you know, see things from an outside perspective. And, you know, I always say everybody has their own specialty. So like I've been doing this business for 35 years and I'm a worker. Like I, I just know what has to get done. I go, I get it done. And that's great. I'm not the salesperson. I'm not, you know, you need various people with their special skills to come in. So if they know how to do the job, but you know, from the other side, what it is, what you need to get you in front of everybody. So, you know, they need that, which is awesome. And I like how you you do the whole, you know, analysis and conversation because people just, you know, look at no business is the same as every, everyone else. So they can just look and say, okay, I want to be like that, but their business might be a little bit different. You know, their customer base might be a little different. So you need somebody from the outside who can, especially someone with experience in every different type of company to really evaluate it and give you positive input, you know? Sure, no, that's well said. I mean, every business is different. It's like almost like a fingerprint, right? Mm-hmm. It's not only the business process is 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 strangely enough pretty similar in every business, but right. what you want from it, where you're going with it, who you're talking to as an audience, um, very, very different. I always tell the story of Domino's Pizza, right? <laughs> It's it's always blows my mind how large a company they are with a pizza that really doesn't taste that good. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. (laughs) It's just not that great a pizza, but they found a way to to address a specific niche in the market and and just they're a $17 billion organization. So it's so much fun growing a business and so much fun getting there. Um, If you can get that stress and frustration out of the way, and, and very often a third party can help you do that by saying, look, don't get emotional about it. Let's just look at it from a 30,000 foot view and, yeah. and put a plan in place. You sound like me. I love what I do. And I always say it's just fun. Like, I love being creative. I love looking, you know, and everybody else running the business is like, this is not fun. We have to do ABC. But it can be fun if you really look at the big picture and you're not in a hurry because everybody wants results overnight. It's a process. It takes time right. and have fun along the way. You know. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. I loved every second of owning my own business. <laughs> um, sure, there was plenty of times there was stress, and you yeah. know, God, I have no hair as a result, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so it happens, but uh, it's so so much fun if you just let it be, you just let it grow, and let it do its thing, and and enjoy it, I really mm. enjoy it because it's way better than a job. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> if you if you if you focus on it that way, right? Yeah, it can, it's the right mindset, is, right? That's right. A business <laughs> is, a, is a business is an entity in and of itself, right? But yeah. it can overwhelm you if you let it. But if you sure. stay in control, um, it, it's a lot of fun. Good ride. Right. So now tell us, what's one tool that you always carry in your toolbox, no matter what project you're working on? Well, I alluded to it a little bit before about KPIs, right? So a lot of folks come to us, even with marketing. And, and one of the largest complaints we hear is, you know, I'm spending a lot of money on marketing or SEO or social media, and I'm just not seeing the results. Um, and when we drill down on it, we, we've really failed to monitor what the various pieces of feedback can be in the KPIs. So things like number of leads generated, number of people engaging with our message, number of people who convert to customers long term. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you measure it, as you say, when you stand back and you look at it and you measure it very specifically, the, the direction that you need to go with your marketing or, or any other thing in your business that's really monitorable um, is it becomes self-evident. It says, hey, look, that message isn't working. We need to change it up. We need right. to figure it out. And all, all too often, all too often, I'd say 80 plus percent of the time, people, their message just isn't clear enough. You know, they're talking to customers with this broad, I want to speak to everyone type approach. Right. And guess what? They don't really engage with anyone. I did a blog a little while ago. Um, and I, in, in doing the blog, I did some research to say, you know, how many ads does the average American actually see in a day? Mm-hmm. And when I saw the result, I said, that can't possibly be true. <laughs> and ha- being an engineer in my background, it, I'm one of those detail guys, right? So I went out, pad and pen <laughs> on one day, and I looked and said, hey, how many times do I see an ad or I hear a radio ad or, I, or on TV? And honestly, the stat was correct. It's between 4,000 and 10,000 ads a day we see. So when you're running a company, and you're trying to get your message right, it really needs to be engaging. It really needs to interrupt somebody's day or they just pass it by because it's all white noise in the background. Right. Without KPIs, without measuring that, um, it's impossible. You just don't know. One day it's good, next day it's not. 
you trend it over time and it becomes pretty clear on, on what your what your turn rate or what your connection rate is for the customer. So mm -hmm. always, 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 we set people up with a dashboard in every aspect of their business from marketing straight through profitability. Everybody, everybody monitors KPIs from a revenue or a profit standpoint because you, you run that that p l at the end of the day and sometimes you're very happy about it sometimes you're not so happy about right. it but you're looking in the rearview mirror when you run that right. so it's not an operational kpi it's not something you can tweak a little and have a better result it's really right. just something to say how did we do right. so you need to get proactive on looking at your business as it's running right mm -hmm. the gauges in your car are a really good example of that right without right. a speedometer or an oil oil gauge We'd be lost out there, right? right? It'd be it'd be a tough thing to run a car, but business is exactly the same way. And if right. you, you put a good dashboard together and you check the dashboard pretty regularly, um, you, you're gonna you're really gonna get a good understanding of how your business runs. Right. Yeah, people don't realize sometimes there's a lot of mechanics involved. Like, you know, even if they hire a social media person, you know, if all they're doing was just slapping on a couple posts across social media networks and calling it a day. There's no interaction there. And even with the message, like you say, like I remember once I was representing, um, it was kind of like a fast, a healthy fast food eatery. But think about your audience. Your message isn't the same for every type of audience you're trying to get to. You have people who maybe are recovering from heart attacks or have like health issues. Then you have people who just are into the gym and fitness, you know, then the people who are into, you know, non-GMO or, you know, vegans or whatever. I mean, there's just so many different types of audience and you have to tailor your message for each specific one so that in itself is is a project you know so a lot of you know i hear a lot of people and kpis are super important because they'll just hire somebody who slaps a couple posts and then calls it a day but if you're not getting interaction you're not getting the right message and even doing perception studies like i've done that before where a company believes their message is one you know they believe that the audience sees them as abc but then you have like these perception studies where you just ask them and they're seeing it completely different. And you're like, wow, I didn't realize that that's how you saw us. Now we know we, what we have to change. So people don't realize like all the technicality that's involved in doing things like this. So KPIs are, are really good. Yeah, very true. I mean, it's, you know, it's so often the customer is never even consulted. So mm -hmm. you've got customers who are very happy with you and they're looking, they love what you do and they're long-term branded people. And no one ever asked them a question, well, why did you buy from us, right? right. And you think you know, you think you have, oh, I know what it is, but yeah. you really you really don't know. You, and your best resource is the guy who walks in your door every day or picks up the phone to call you every day. Just ask them the question yeah. and you'd be surprised maybe how different that answer might be. Yeah. It, it is pretty, pretty, pretty revealing. We, we did the, very, in the last company I ran, we did a branding exercise. We brought an outside consultant and, and her and her company went around and interviewed our customers. And I was astounded, to be honest with you. We had been in business better than 20 years at the time. And I was astounded at what they were saying about us and how I was totally missing it from a, yeah. from a marketing standpoint. I just was not hitting it. Right. And it was, it, was, it was a great exercise. And that's why I went out on this mission in the Tech Resource Center in the first place, because I wanted to bring some of those hard lessons right. uh, to people a little quicker and a little more easily uh, to be accessed, you know? Yeah. And I mean, it can be a pain in the neck when you <clears> feel you have to get, you know, get people to give you five minutes to answer these things, but there's so many various ways of doing it. Like how many times you'll see, just answer these quick questions and you'll get a $5 Amazon gift card. Okay. That's it right. takes a minute of my time. I'll do that. Or even go into a restaurant, you know, put it on the table. You know, can you just answer these five questions? We'll give you a free cupcake as dessert. I mean, it doesn't cost you that much to do that, but you get valuable feedback. That that cupcake that you just gave away, if you get enough of them, you can get some valuable feedback that's going to increase your revenue potentially um, just by getting that feedback. So people have to just not be lazy and, you know, do the, do the work and get the feedback that they need to succeed. Right, and not be shy about interacting with your customer your customer yeah. wants to interact with you they they yeah. really do they they're not buying from you because they don't like you they like you so they yeah. want to it's the old no like trust buy right, right? i mean if, if they're not if they're already buying they have all those other other things are taken care of already so right. they want to talk to you well even like on the investor relations part there's you know retail investors which is your mom and pop shareholder and then you have your institutional shareholder now your mom and pop aren't going to hold hundreds of thousands of shares like your institutional holders but you know for years 
companies were more interested in what the institutional shareholders had to say. And years ago, I remember doing a, a perception study and we included the retail shareholders and they were floored. They were like, oh my God, thank you. No one ever asked us. And it was amazing to see how their view was night and day compared to the institutional shareholders. So now we know if you needed to get your message across, you need to kind of come up with two different messages. But it was just, they were so appreciative of have, having been asked because they were never asked before. And it was really valuable to see. So people want to be asked. And, you know, what they tell you is really super valuable to any company, no matter whether IRPR, whatever. So valuable. No yeah. question about it. No question yeah. about it. Okay. So what are you most excited about right now? You know, I tell you what excites me today, and I literally had a call on this earlier this morning, is, is the toolkits that are available to small business owners today. You know, with the advent of AI and some of the sophisticated automation tools that are out there, that small business owner can be quite a powerhouse. Yeah. Where back in the day, it, it was not that easy. It was, it was much, much more difficult. You had to have a team of people even to create content or to create videos mm -hmm. or to get your message out there, right? Today, you could literally can do that with a bot, right? These right. guys, it's, it's, I'm astounded. I'm a techie. <laughs> I love tech. And but it's it's very, very powerful and it really can enable a small time company to look pretty sophisticated and pretty and pretty powerful when it comes to the interface with their customers. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited about having some of my customers implement some of those bots and some of those AI tools. And they're just they're just working really, really well. Where are they going to go? A little scary, really, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because they absolutely imitate a human in, in every every capacity. So it, it's going to get interesting <laughs> to see where it goes. But right now, uh, I think I'm, I'm just, I can't wait to see where it goes for the small business owner, if they leverage it properly. Yeah. Because it's it's a very, 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 very wonderful time to be living in. And it, it'd be interesting to see. And you know, it takes it takes that the money part of the, particularly in the marketing part, but even in even in how you access your customers, um, out out of the equation. Where okay, you don't really need to have as much anymore yeah. um, to really get a good, really, really, really nice job done for your customers. So I think that's I'm I'm on it every day. I'm looking at new tools every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like anything else, some are good, some are not so good, but um, it's it's an exciting time. You know, it's funny, I always feel like I'm aging myself when people always say, like, how are things different now than they were then? And I'm like, you know, I mean, I'm coming from the day before internet where, you know, you had a PowerPoint print. Yeah. You didn't have PowerPoint. It was a flip chart on your desk. I mean, printed them. I mean, it was just, and nowadays, I mean, literally, I remember That's going right. to board meetings and nobody has this anymore. Every board member had an iPad. So everybody just, you know, and, and everybody with iWatches, iPad, and now, you know, podcasts, and some people just don't have time to sit here and, and listen on the phone. So they'll just listen to replay as they're traveling to and from. I mean, it's, it really has made life so much easier for people. And like I said, okay. I'm, I'm with you on I can't wait to see where this all goes, because it's it is exciting. Scary, yeah, I can remember. I, do you remember? Do you remember the old acetates where you had the presentation on the acetate? You put it on. That's that what we had. Room. Yep. yep. Yeah, it, was, it was right in front of you, and you got so hot when you were doing the presentation. It was terrible. And then remember when there was a typo or something, and you're like, "Oh, I mean, yeah. there's nothing you could do about it. You, you can kind of smudge it." But I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, so that's funny times. Times so definitely have changed. changed. <laughs> God, you can change. You literally can change the presentation on the fly. I've been in. Insane. I've been in a room with a client where we're doing a presentation for somebody and they have somebody working with them. Literally, as the conversation's going on, they're editing the next slide. And as it comes up, they've got it just it's just awesome how, how yeah. it works. And it's 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 great because it allows such a more intimate conversation between the customer and the and the business owner. So yeah. it's it's really it's really a cool time. Very exciting. Very yeah, exciting. for sure. <laughs> Um, so what has fundamentally changed about your work from when you started until now? You know, fundamentals, I don't think have changed, really. The fundamentals are, I think they're going to be there forever, right? The fundamentals of business are, are, are there and they're, and they're moving forward. It's really, it's the, it's, I think it's the clientele. I think it's the people who are starting businesses today and, and some of the new ideas and some of the creativity that they bring to the plate that, um, it's just blowing me away. You know, there's 
And, you know, there's all sorts of different people that would never before, as I said, with the, some of the tools or some of the things out there, never before would have thought of opening their own business. There's so much opportunity for them now with grant money that's on the table, with people who are trying to see underdeveloped communities build build up from the ground up. Um, so I don't know if fundamentals have changed, but I think the tone of business has changed. I think it's become more accepting of, of everyone. Yeah. And I, I always like to say to my wife that, you know, business should be blind to uh, color, sex, uh, orientation, whatever. There really sure. should never be a discussion uh, about it because business is business. You, you, I don't care who you are. You can right. be hugely successful in business if if you stick to it. And I, I always like the, the, the analogy of the Karate Kid. Everybody remembers the movie, The Karate Kid. Right. Wax on, wax off, right? right? Wax on, wax off. That's what business is about. It's about doing the right things consistently, right. and it'll move. And I'm so sorry, and it'll move you. It'll move you forward. Um, yeah. So it's a pretty yeah. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think a lot of that. A lot, a lot of that has changed, and it, right. it was it was hard to get into business when I when I started my business. Yeah. Very difficult. It was not easy to break in, um, and thankfully I had a tremendous guy who helped me along the way. Nice. Uh, but today it's much easier, much more, much, many more resources, a lot of, uh, a lot of funding and grants and that kind of thing that right. can help people along the way. I think that was one of the, one of the positives that came out of COVID was um, everybody, you know, with having lo lose, lost jobs or having more time on their hands, it seemed everybody kind of took a step back and said, you know what, I could do this. And so many people became entrepreneurs and Unfortunately, so many people became coaches, but <laughs> it's the entrepreneurs were good. <laughs> so true. So true. Uh, <laughs> everybody, everybody who wants to hang a shingle out as a business advisor and you yeah. know, see folks and they don't have any credentials at all. <laughs> so, so I know half these people. Weird. I'm like, I worked with you many years ago, and now you're a coach. Are you certified? No, but I can help people. But what gave you the label coach? But okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, it's so true. It's so true. So many people, you know, marketing can be the same way. I find that often where people are, I can do your marketing, I can do your website, I can do your whatever. And their background is, uh, you know, not even closely related. So <laughs> right. I mean, they watched a YouTube that. video and they think they've got it all figured out. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. You know, because Wix and some of these website tools that right. they're building are very easy to use. So virtually anybody can start yeah. to do it. But there's a there's a science behind it. And so you need to be sure that uh, before you go running down that road, you've got your ducks in a row. Yeah, for sure. So now what's the biggest problem that you or your team solved in the last year? What's the biggest problem we've solved in the last year? Um, I think the biggest problem we solved in the last year was for a small company. Um, she runs a... Uh, she runs a registry, for lack of a better word, it's maternal medicine. So in, in apparently in the U.S. market, um, it's a company called Be Your Village. Um, in the U.S. market, it's a women aren't supported the way they are in other markets in the world. Where, And I don't mean with uh, onesies and toys and, you know, that kind of stuff, because we know we have plenty of that. But they don't have the, the doula support and the maternal medicine support that they need from midwives, lactation consultants and so forth. And she created this website where she's connecting um, vendors who supply that service with the families, really, of the pregnant woman, so they can create sort of a, a funding uh, path for that for that kind of support. And so I think we I've been working with her for a year or so, and I think we finally got the messaging down that nice. it's really the market that needed to be changed a little bit. Right. It just wasn't ready for her product. Um, and that was a tremendous success, and she's really well on her way at this point. And I think that company, you'll see it. It's going to be one of the, you know, one of the unicorns that pop out in the next year or so. No nice. question about it. Pretty, yeah, pretty exciting. I wouldn't stuff. have even thought about, you know, that it's actually pretty good. Well, when I started, I didn't really know a lot about maternal medicine, as you might imagine. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> me as a mom, education. I only knew they gave me vitamins. That's it. I don't, <laughs> you know, I they I took what they gave me. I didn't know what other options they were, you know. But it's good. Yeah. Very nice. different today. So it's a, it's yeah. a it was a it was a huge success, I think, for the entire group. Certainly for Caitlin, who runs the team, um, and it's so exciting to watch them watch them grow. And I think they're nice. they're off to a really really strong start. So nice. Now, what's one initiative on your whiteboard that wasn't there thirty days ago? 
Well, I think I, I, I think I'm going to punt back to the AI and uh, getting getting a better toolkit in place for the customers that we serve. Uh, we're we're deep. We're probably elbow deep in real investigation into these tools, how they can be leveraged, and what what benefit that's going to have for a customer. You know, what kind of focus should they have? What tools should they or shouldn't they be using? How do they get it uh, up and running? One, one of the things the Tech Resource Center does is just that, sort of that investigational piece. So when a customer comes to us and says, hey, I need to generate content, we just don't send them off on a some wild goose chase. Mm -hmm. We've done the research. We've formed the relationships with the people that we need to form the relationships with. So the answer is is very clear for them. And, and AI and those toolkits and how they're applied, um, I don't know if they're there yet. I don't think we've got it real answer answer right. but um that's the initiative that we're working on at this point to say hey how do we get that to our customers right. in a in a cost effective way right yeah i mean ai definitely um it has such huge potential but <clears throat> i mean if you like chat gpt i mean it's only been programmed up until 20 what is it, 2021 so we're in 2023 now so it's not as evolved but this is just the start i mean i i'd say give it a couple months and it's just gonna skyrocket so it definitely but even with basic things like you know, like it could write blogs, it could write newsletters, it could write, I could just write a simple thing, say, instead of me researching, I'm doing this press release, what are the best hashtags for this? Boom, there we go. You know, so it, it definitely saves a lot of time and energy. But, you know, it, it even for stuff like that, it might not be the most updated, but you can ask a simple question, like, what, what are people wondering about this? What's a hot topic for this? You know, and then you can know if you need to tweak things along the way. So, awesome. Well, ChatGPT, it's interesting. So it's not even just that. It's we're now ChatGPT for Excel spreadsheets. One of, one of the things we run into with business owners a lot is they just don't know how to use, uh, you know, spreadsheets and workbooks and, you know, these kinds of things. And literally you can write in English what you want the spreadsheet to do and it'll do it for you. So it's, <laughs> It's uh, it's it's a big hurdle. I mean, it gets people over very, very quickly. They get a feeling for, oh, well, I, this is what I'm looking for, right. and you know, it'll create the entire workbook for them, which is uh, which is very, very cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nice. I've spent years learning how to use Excel properly, and, oh, sure. uh, and I'm still probably not even close to an expert. So yeah, I mean, I don't uh, use it. I don't use it every day. So anytime I'm doing something, I have to quickly Google. You know, how do I how do I get the right. sum of this, or how do I add these columns? And the, it is a pain in the neck. But yeah, if I could just program in a uh, a plug in a, a you know a question, do this for me, bam, it's done. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, pretty nice. pretty cool stuff. I only really learned that the other day. We were working with somebody, <laughs> and they were like, "Do you know you have this?" And it's it's just such a deep tool. And there are many of them that are deep like that. You know. These video creators where you can create an avatar of yourself. Lots of people are shy and they don't want to be on camera and they don't want to do these kinds of things. Um, you no longer need to do it. It'll do it for you. Yeah. you know, all you need to do is write up the content and it'll take it from there. And well, even, they'll even help you with the content. So it's, yeah. it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, the avatars, a lot of them are not like you yourself. They're just avatars. Right. But I did find one that can do one of you. So yes. I... I'm actually going to be doing a podcast with them uh, coming up, um, but they did one of me and nobody believed it. They didn't believe that it wasn't me. So that I was doing another one saying, hi, just so you could see it's me again. Like you could do your own voice or you could do an automated voice. I did my own. So it's my voice, but it, it was just an avatar of me. Then I had my grandkids doing the same thing. They were like, is that me? I'm like, that's you. Welcome to the new world. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's scary when you think about it. People can actually imitate you now. <laughs> well, that's what they were saying with like fake news and stuff. They're saying like, you know, right. they, they kept throwing um, uh, President Trump and all that people on there. And they're like, unless you're physically there, you don't know, is that really them? You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, you got a point. <laughs> it's going to get scary. No question. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there'll be regulation and what have you that comes out of it but yeah um, just the fact you could recreate an avatar of yourself is just astounding to me for sure uh, i couldn't believe it when i saw it i was like oh my god but yeah it's amazing <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it so now what's something in your industry or something about your industry that surprised you lately well you know you hit on it before the with covid look, everyone's become a coach everybody become <laughs> an advisor and wow. um everybody's got some sort of a program that they're putting people through and it, it's dangerous unfortunately it's just people are out there and they're they're really they're not doing anything for anybody they don't even have the experience to dive into and so it's giving 
good good advisors and good coaches and good resource centers a bad name yeah. um where you know they're just they have done that you know they charged me all sorts of money and nothing happened right <laughs> so I, I think we need to spend a little time in, in the industry as a whole sort of looking at that and looking more at how difficult it is to get certification or you know top 10 things you should be looking for in a coach I'm, yeah. I'm working on some of those toolkits for people so in my social media they can under, better understand you know what it, what are you looking for you know the yeah. good coach isn't out there claiming all sorts of miracles are going to happen overnight. Uh, it's hard work. It's a process. There needs to be a toolkit that comes along with that. And very often some supplemental, uh, you know, resources that they bring to bear that aren't, aren't the part of their own company, right? Mm -hmm. So they're partners or maybe they're joint ventures or whatever they might be. So I, I'd say that's the biggest change. You know, COVID, everyone left the corporate environment and said, hey, mm -hmm. I ran a division for you know, Lily or whoever, and I, I can do this for anybody. Right. And it, it just isn't the same. And I know, I know lots of friends who are high level executives in corporate America, who are very, very talented people who could never be a coach. Right. <laughs> they just couldn't be because they don't know what entrepreneurism is all about. They right. had a, a routine, they had a division, whatever it was, there was a budget they were given and, and off, off they went. Right. So uh, very, very different from from that entrepreneurial experience. Nice. Now, if you can go back and give yourself one piece of advice about business, what would it be? <clears throat> oh, well, that's a great question. <laughs> if I can go back and give myself one piece of advice about business, what would it be? Um, I think it would be, um, I, got, I, I, I was very fortunate and I was able to sell the company. Um, but prior to selling the company, I probably hadn't done enough wealth management for myself as a business owner where I was making tons of money, I was doing having a lot of fun, I was growing the business, but I wasn't really preparing for an exit that might not happen. And so I talked to a lot of my business owners uh, immediately about taking a portion of the income the company makes and putting it away for a rainy day um, as best you can today. You know, they made it a little more difficult for business owners in that there needs to be retirement plans and those kinds of things are weighted um, but you need to think about it. You need to work on it. You really need to, to uh, you know, spend a little time doing that. I, like I said, I was fortunate. I was able to sell the company for a, a nice dollar, and that I was set from there. Nice. But um, it really, it really could have gone the other way. So, you know, looking back on it, I, I probably should have spent more time doing that, and it's why I stress it to my business owners all the time. No, but that's what's important when you talk to somebody who has the experience. You know, it's it kind of like I do a um, like a weekly uh, YouTube channel. It's just called Been There, Done That. It's just my free advice on things that I've gone through. I always say 35 years. You name the mistake, I've done it all. I'm like, learn from my mistakes. I'm just giving you free advice to help you not endure what I endured. So, you know, having someone with the experience like yourself, you know, people need to put a little value on that. You know, you're not just telling people just, because you like hearing yourself talk, you're trying to help them, you know, with the pain points. So, yeah, so I saw, I saw a thing on LinkedIn today about mistakes. It's what to do when you make them, not if you make them. Yeah. If, you, if you're not making mistakes, you're not moving forward. Exactly. Right? So yeah. You cannot look back and feel bad about it. God, I've made so many mistakes. I have so many huge opportunities I walked right by and didn't see. Um it, it it just happens. There's nothing yeah. you can't you can't think about it. You just got to keep moving forward. But it's from those mistakes, it's from those experiences that we have that um, we really grow as business owners, yeah. as people. Um, and it, it's fine. That's 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 the process. That's yeah. that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's value to that. You know, I mean, you you learn from mistakes and you try to help people not make those same mistakes. They could either listen or they could not. And at the end of the day, just say, okay, call me in a year when, when you figure it out, you know? Yeah, good. Yeah, people are too cautious. I mean, I think number one error from a business owner standpoint is being afraid to take the step. I might fail. It might not work out. Likelihood is it might not, but yeah. if you don't take the step, you're never going to know. So yeah. you've got to you've got to move forward. You cannot stand in one place in today's economy. You cannot stand in one place, e even if you're having a good bottom line. You've got a successful company. Standing there is is a death sentence. You, you will somebody yeah. will walk right over you, run right by you. 
Um, and everything can change overnight. So you have mm -hmm. to continually evolve as a business owner, as a business itself, as a team that is approaching it. Um, yeah. You're always looking for the next best thing. Yeah, that's what I always um, always talk about evolution because it is true. I mean, that's one thing <clears throat> um, I always admire with Disney. You know, I mean, they're constantly changing. There's a new movie, they got a new ride. You know, I mean, they're constantly evolving to keep up with the new trends. And, you know, that's what keeps them, people going back for more. Sure. Think how fast our society changes daily. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's mind boggling, really. It used to be a lot slower, but I think as we're moving along with technology, things are evolving at, at lightning, lightning speed. And yeah, it's just, sure. you need, you need to be keeping up. You need to be, you need to be knee deep in your industry to understand what's happening, where are the changes, what's going on. Don't, don't let something big hit you over the head and realize, you know, I'm out of business, you know, because right. that, that, that was my business and it's done now. It's no longer, no longer, no longer happening. So, very important. Now, what's one big take? What's one big takeaway that you want listeners to get from this episode? Uh, I think if they could take anything away, it's it's reach out for help when you need it. Understand who you are and where you're going, and and enjoy the ride all along the way. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't don't be afraid to talk to an advisor. I say all the time to, you know, I, I'm a big gym advocate. I go to the gym on a regular basis. I have a trainer. Without the trainer, I could never do what I, <laughs> I've done um, right. because I'm just not strong enough. Really. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but people don't think of that way in terms of business where, hey, this, you're, you're out in business, you're on your own CEO job, as, as you well know, is a very lonely place. There aren't a lot of people to talk to. And yet they are, well, should I really get a mentor? Should I have a coach? There are free mentoring programs out there. There are paid for mentoring programs out there. There are paid for coaching and free coaching programs out there. There are people like the SBDC, SCORE, uh, you name it. There's so many government dollars that pour into this thing where even if you can't afford it, that's fine. Go someplace and get somebody who's a volunteer. Mm -hmm. I volunteer a fair amount of my time as well. Um, get some help. Get an accountability buddy. Um, somebody who's going to keep you on track because very often the ideas that will make you successful are your own and you just need somebody to get you there. It, going back to the gym for a second, we all know what we need to do at the gym. It's, right. it's not rocket science. This is not <laughs> rocket science. But do we do it? No. no. You need somebody, somebody to hold your says, hand and bring you. <laughs> That's right. I need you to come over here and do this. I need yeah. you to do that. Hey, you're doing better this time. Let's do one more than you did last time. Right. It, it's, it's simple. It, you just need that person to help push you up the hill. Right. So if they take anything from this this podcast, it's a it's that reach out for help. There are a lot of people out there who want to help you. Lots, particularly successful people who've been successful in business, they're always willing to help. And once mm -hmm. they've retired, they're very bored people. Take it from me. <laughs> when I when I first thought I was going to retire, I was like, yeah, this is terrible. You know, yeah. I was used to working sixty hours a week. I run it around, flying all over the country, and all of a sudden it was pin quiet. Which right. is, nobody wants that. So they're they're there. They're willing to help, um, you know, reach out for help and, and 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 get the advice you need to move your company forward. Yeah, and, and not obviously not be shy. Like part of this channel, um, Jason Miller, he's from Strate uh, Strategic Advisor Board. Um, you know, he's a great mentor to me and many other people. And I just kind of tapped him on the shoulder and I was like, hey, you know, love learning from you. And, you know, he'll take you right under his wing and help. I mean, doesn't ask for anything 100%. in return. It's just these are people who want to help. They've they have the experience, know what it's like to succeed and want to help. You know, it's kind of like you say, sitting back and watching someone else succeed. It's like, wow, you know, and knowing that you had a part in that is awesome. Very exciting stuff. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. No question about it. And so it's there. Reach for it. If they're not the right person for you, find the one who is the right person for right. you. Because let's face it, it's it's a it's a uh, intimate relationship. It's somebody you right. need to be able to talk to and relate to and have a good right. good fit with. So not everybody's going to fit. You could get the best business coach or mentor in the world um, that they're just your personality wise. You guys don't click. Right. So it's a, you know, it's a thing. Work, work on it and, right. and reach out for help. Yeah. And even just in my past, like, you know, I was at one company for 16 years and I, you know, just happened to see one of them on LinkedIn one day. And I never told them, I said, you know, I, I'm, I 
I didn't graduate high school saying that this is what I wanted to do with my life. I actually worked for a company and it was predominantly women and they just were hustling and hustling and they were so smart. And I just was like, wow, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, I want to be them when I grow up. And I had never said that to them. And I remember just, you know, having this brief two second back and forth dialogue. And I said, you know, I don't know if I ever told you that. And they were like, oh, I never knew that. Thank you so much. You know, I'm like, yeah, you have no idea the impact you put on me. I learned so much from you, you know, kind of maybe you could pass that forward to other people, you know. No, nice. it's very true. You don't realize the impact you have. And, yeah. uh, but it's really, really rewarding, right? When someone comes to you and said, you, you don't know the difference you made in my life. Yeah. It's just you, you walk around high for the rest of the day. It just sure. feels so good. Like, I'm <laughs> right. so happy that happened. I'm so happy I could give back to you, right? Yeah, it's well, a, there a was a girl thing. in college who was doing her thesis, and I guess she was reaching out to other people because this was what she wanted it to be about. And I guess everybody ignored her. I sat for like an hour and a half on a Zoom chat with her. I gave her all, it talked to her very down to earth. And she was like, so she like sent me a copy of the paper. She was like, you really inspired me to want to be like, you know, you know, I wasn't sure if this is what I wanted to do. But, you know, because I said, I remember what it was like. I started as a receptionist, worked my way up the corporate ladder. I remember what it was like to be you. I can you know, tell you everything you want to know, all my struggles, all my hurdles, you know, but I, I'm happy to help, you know, I've been there, I know what it was like, and I love what I do. So if I can inspire you to do the same, and you can enjoy it, you know, hey, that's what I'm here for, you know. For sure, yeah, my wife volunteers for a group called Moxie. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a terrific group out there for young women who are coming up in the workplace. And um, they, they do some fine work, they really nice. do. And it's, it's, you know, whether you believe it or not, people, you know, not to be political, but it's, you know, women still have a struggle in the workplace. I mean, they have a lack of confidence sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if they if they can get a little boost up, helping, helping them along the way, that's awesome. I mean, that's nice. really awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for being on the show. Again, that was Pat from My Tech pleasure. Resource Center. So thanks for listening to Successful Minds with Patty B. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show here. I'll provide the links in the, in the end. You can also listen via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or for wherever you listen to your podcasts. So thanks again, Pat. I'll put your um, contact info on the end of this. And everyone, again, thank you. And until next time. Thanks, Patty. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Successful Minds with your host, Patricia Barnowski-Schneider. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.